Well, I want to go over one uh, interesting scenario where the United States or the West might actually collapse financially, and it's an, it's another angle. Let me just put it to you this way. I don't know this for a fact. I mean, nobody knows. Uh, but it's it's another angle that like actually the other alternative media is not really saying. Um, and uh, I know it's, you know, there's drama about the interview, the movie. And Kim Jong, he's watching the movie. He's, he thinks it's funny. I mean, he's out there with his, with his military leaders, like, sitting down here on the table by the DMZ watching the movie. They, they don't care, man. It's not, there's no problem with the freaking movie, man. So it's not that. But, and you also know about, you know, um, what the hell you call it? The national debt clock. I mean, everybody knows about this. I don't know how high it can go. Eventually it's going to blow up or something's going to happen. But, you know, this may not be the actual catalyst that actually brings it down. Uh, you know, today... It's crazy that we're looking at um, crude oil prices dropping even more, going down to 52. Now, I know, what, like, tonight you're looking at silver back over 16 again. You know, is it going to go below 15? Is it going, where is it? Yeah, it's, it's just a long, complicated bottom, you know. But mm, who the hell knows how long this is going to go. But, you know, the one thing that's actually going to affect us, I think, is where it's going to be a major problem is food production food production and this is uh and i think it's all related to the weather uh i know i put out something about the mini ice age coming up and uh the global warming stuff is like so far off base i mean there's uh warming in the ocean due to um volcano activity underground deep in the waters and the ocean temperatures are getting a little bit warmer but a lot of the ice packs are growing a lot of the ice ice glaciers are growing and I put out a recent video about, I'll, I'll probably just put a link on the bottom about, uh, you know, a number of different weird occurrences that happen throughout the world with crazy snowfalls, not just in Buffalo, New York, or Maine, or even in Russia or China. Like Sweden's already got two seasons worth of snow early in the year. Palermo, Sicily on a coast next to the Mediterranean at zero elevation practically. They got like five inches of snow. Not in a mountain, up right, right there on the coast by the Mediterranean. Southern Greece got five inches of snow. Snow in North Africa. I don't know. Northern uh, Japan, where they get a lot of snow, they've already had, um, you know, as much snow as they normally get in a year. You know, it's, now I know some places didn't get all like a lot of snow. I think the Midwest and the USA didn't get much yet, but, you know, who knows. Well, anyway, there might be an answer to the food production, and this is actually the partial answer. It's a, it's a hybrid crop, uh, purple crush and wheat. Purple crush and wheat is going to make a new purple wheat that's going to get you uh, feeling good, not worrying about any kind of problems or anything. So maybe that'll be the answer. So I don't know. But, you know, um, now this may be a hoax story I'm going to put out because I saw this on other alternative media st stuff and I was like look and I said wait a minute let me investigate this a little more because you know I got taken in by some of this stuff before but it's just I am really checking out I know I, I don't really act too serious on here but I try to really verify these stories they're talking you know it it could be I know like the farmer's almanac talks about and this is all related to finance oh big time Jimmy Rogers you, if you want to actually figure out what discretionary spending is you know, when you're talking about poor people, first thing, it's not, they don't spend it on rent. They spend it on food. And if food goes up a lot due to the weather changes, global climate changes where it's getting colder and there's less crop production, well, guess what? It's going to really affect the economy and it's going to affect the people that are actually on food assistance because it's not going to go that far and it's going to be a lot of civil unrest. I don't want to paint the doom and gloom here, but I really, you know, I know there's exaggerations out there about this ice age coming now. It's, yes, it is, and it's going to be for the next 20-something years. It's uh, going to get colder and colder. But, you know, it may not be what some people are saying, because I saw some other stories. But actually, the Farmer's Almanac, and here's a picture of... Uh, Staten Island over here, and then you got Coney Island over here. Actually, back, if a lot of people don't know, back in the 1600s, and the reason I'm mentioning the 1600s is for a certain reason, back in the 1600s, this, this uh, uh, the Narrows over here, they call it, between Staten Island and Brooklyn, whatever it is, 
it was uh we it was actually frozen over six weeks out of the year you could walk over it you know i guess back when the indians owned the place or something you know but that's how cold it was in the 1600s now the farmer's almanac is saying that the sun sun activity is showing uh a low like it's going to go back to the period back in the 1600s when we had the mini ice age and it doesn't happen all in one year but it starts this year it starts this year and it already looks like it started this year to tell you the truth because it only takes one or two degrees to make a whole lot of rain into a whole hell of a lot of snow right that's one thing but it doesn't take that much for you know we saw last year when the niagara falls froze over the first time since and i don't know you know the 1800s but it's more than that it's really the cost of living goes up with people that are on assistance from the government and if they can't make ends meet you know now too good what's going to happen if the weather changes for the worst you know now i don't want to paint doom and gloom but i think this is reality but i'm also going to point out another an exaggeration this was actually from i don't know this was a map they put out but this one i'll, I'll mention who it is but it could be partially true, but he's really freaking pushing someone. I'll tell you what he actually said. And I know this was on other um, alternative media circles, but I was like, wow, man, come on. You know, there's it's going to get colder a lot faster. Yes, it's going to be a problem. It's going to affect crop production. It's going to affect the economy. It's going to put a lot of burden on the government. It's probably going to cause a lot of civil unrest. And... You know, this is probably what's going to really affect the USA strength more than anything. Hmm. In Russia, too. In Russia, in Europe, and probably Japan, and a lot of other places. You know, I might change the world around for over the next 20 years just due to this. But, you know, they're talking about above normal snowfall. And actually, most of the Midwest really hasn't had snow this year too much. It might start, though. You never know. I mean, last year, Chicago... Around this time, I think January 6th or whatever time of day is, they had like a record low or near record low. So, you know, it doesn't exactly go perfectly every year, but it's getting colder generally, a lot colder. Then over here on the eastern seaboard, we're like New York, Boston, Washington, D.C., Baltimore, and all those major cities are, and actually most of the GDP of the country if you look at it that way, because the GDP of the country is not interdispersed evenly throughout the country. It's all right here, well above normal snowfall, which could affect the GDP and put a lot more burden on city budgets and, uh, you know, the output of industry in those areas. Not too crazy, you know. Now, I know in Japan they're going to come out with a lot more sales of high stockings, in Tokyo, man, they're already getting ready for the winter and having a lot more stylish high stockings because the snow is going to be way over the knees, you know? But I'm just kidding about that. But, you know, <laughs> i got to interject some garbage in this stuff because I, I don't like being too serious on it. But it's true. It's true. But, yeah, you know, and, you know, as Marilyn once said, you know, she says, go ahead and make my day. But, you know, she said it in a different way from Clint Eastwood. So if it gets really cold out there, you just got to remember to stay warm and uh, keep up with the indoor activities and hang out in the cat shelter with the cat, you know. So, but here's the ludicrous stories I want to get into. Well, I don't want to say it's well, it is ludicrous because I, I did a little calculation in my head, and actually this was on the. Well, I don't want to knock this guy or say nothing, but it's actually Doctor Boris uh, Shevardnik, whatever I don't know how to say this guy's name, a doctor of global weather sciences. Now, he's probably, I think he's right about it's going to get severely cold. Like, the Farmer's Almanac, which is 80% correct, is talking about this is trend we're going into this year, and it's going to keep going colder and colder and colder. And they're going by the sun activity. And they're and they saying it's going to be very, very, very cold, even compared to last year, which has set a lot of records. But they don't want to say too much because... They don't want to say, make it sound too bad, but it's gonna. They're already saying it's gonna be very, very cold, right? This guy, this Doctor Boris, I'll just leave it at that. He says that. Um, say, let's say your area got a 20 inches of accumulative snow for the season. 
and the snowfall is predicted to start by the end of September or whatever, beginning of October, you can expect to multiply that number by up to 5, 10, maybe even 20 times in some areas. In the worst zones, you can see 50 times the amount of snow you've had in the past. Really? You mean, uh, like, so if you got, like, 30 inches of snow someplace, you're going to have 1,500 inches of snow? Like, uh, 15, almost 15 times what Buffalo gets in New York? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> That's a little bit out there on exaggeration land. But, you know, it may not, you know, it doesn't have to be anywhere near that to have a severe economic problem, right? It doesn't have to be anywhere near that to have a severe economic problem. Because um, the resources of the government is already stretched pretty damn thin. You've seen the debt clock. You know, I showed you the damn debt clock. $18 trillion, a lot of people on uh, food assistance. And they're barely making pe ends meet now. Um, what are you going to do, man, for heat and food, right? I mean, you know, the other thing is, I think that actually uh, oil prices, you know, I said this before, I think Russia's kind of got an... You know, I'm not on the side of Russia or nothing here. You know, like the rest of the alternative media is talking about, oh, we love Vladimir Putin. Yeah, right. You know, <laughs> come on. But uh, what I'm saying is they really got an ace because, you know, I can't see how they're going to keep these oil prices down. I think they're doing this with electronic gizmo rigging. I don't know how, but it doesn't make sense because, you know, all of a sudden now that Russia didn't go, well, I don't want to get into all that politics stuff, but you know the deal with Ukraine. I know there's a lot of stuff going on. It isn't like Russia's innocent and the West is all bad. They're all playing games, okay? Really, that's the reality of it. But, um, you know, I just don't think the West is going to be able to keep the crude oil price down in lieu of what's going on with the weather across the world. You know, even though certain areas of the United States have been unseasonally warm after initial... Uh, super cold in November. Um, across the world, it's been really crazy cold. So, anyway, you know, the thing is, um, where this scenario is going to probably lead us is to a brave new frontier of, uh, you know, you know, almost like uh, what happened, I guess, 400 years ago. And what that means economically is that food prices are going to go up a great deal. And actually, Jim Rogers is probably... I don't even know if he's figuring his stuff out. I mean, Jim Rogers thought in his mind that, from my understanding, he said that um, farmers have become are becoming an aging group. Like the average age of farmers in, I don't know, in the U.S. is like 50-something, in Japan it's 60-something. Some new generation is going to have to replace those farmers, right? So it's going to become a highly lucrative field because... There's not enough farmers to actually around, to, you know, back in 150 years ago. I think if you looked at censuses in the U.S., I think 70% of the people were in farming. Now it's like way under 10% or something. But the thing is, um, in lieu of what's happening in the global climate change, it's actually getting colder. I know, I know this is so politically incorrect, but I'm not trying to be politically incorrect. I'm trying to be accurate. I'm trying to say that, uh, you know, the sun, you know, it makes a lot more sense to me anyway, even as a layman. The sun actually has a lot more influence over the temperatures of the earth than uh, an SUV does, right? So, but in lieu of this, it's going to be a, 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 do, a totally different type of world that people are going to have to deal in. It's going to be a lot more expensive for the people that don't have that much money, especially because... They're not going to be able to plop some money down and, uh, you know, buy themselves an electric car. They're going to have electric cars probably be a lot more commonplace. I bet you in about a few years they're going to be electric and electric hybrids and hybrids that can ride or drive elect on a pure electric, say maybe for 80 or 100 miles, are going to be most, not most, but a significant amount, very commonplace uh new cars sold but none of the poor people are going to be able to afford them they're going to be driving the old 100 percent gasoline cars and gasoline might be costing us a hell of a lot more money at that time eventually i think it's going to go way the hell up <laughs> so um but anyway um you know on the bright side you know go ahead and make my day as according to maryland that's what maryland says 
<laughs> because, you know, it's almost like, what are you going to do about it? You know, just hang out in the igloo and stay warm, right? Or you guys here in Japan, if you're walking out and about in the town, make sure you get the latest fashion with the thigh-high stockings and uh, you don't have to worry about your legs hitting the snow. So, but, you know, um, you know, really what it, I think is going on here is that this is enough because historically, it's always been enough to taught to uh, bring down empires, actually, to weather, believe it or not. Historically, if you go all the way back, historically, changes in climate, and, you know, I don't, I don't want to get in arguments with people over, the, you know, the, the, the SUVs causing a climate change or not and stuff. But, I mean, when you've just had changes in climate, you know, before there was SUVs, it was enough to change the crop production. There's been uh, tales back in the, you know, in, in the records where uh, you know farmers used to have to pay taxes. They didn't pay taxes in money; they paid taxes in grain, right? So they couldn't plant the grain in the ground because the ground was all iced over. So they were all uh, pleading with you know the monarchy, "How are we going to pay our taxes?" Because the freaking we can't pay our taxes on our land because <laughs> because the uh, the ground is frozen, you know. So we didn't know what the temperature was, but we know something happened where it got really cold. And actually, that has a lot to do with the you know the economic output of the nation. You know, we live in such a technologically advanced society that we think you know agriculture isn't important. But you know, there's a lot of ways around this as long as people think ahead. But the way the models are, you know, that they're pushing in the, um, you know, the NGOs are actually telling the scientists, you know, we want, to, we're funding a study about global warming. You in or, you know, or do you want to get paid or <laughs> you want to find the right answer? Well, you know, the thing is, I know what the deal is with the global warming is to get the global carbon tax, but they ought to have a global uh, purple crush uh, wheat tax. I mean, maybe that'll be all right. We can grow, we can grow a hybrid purple crush wheat with hemp and mixed in here or something like that and we could pay that in tax you know here can you take a couple bushels you're happy go like see you later and that's the end of it you know instead of giving them green stuff we can give them purple stuff but no it's not going to go that way because we don't live in an ideal society but what i'm saying here is uh when this is prob i really do think this is reality it's not going to happen like next week it's one of these things where it's almost like uh the slow crawl, man. It's slower than waiting for grass to grow. But it's going to have an effect over the next upcoming years. And if there's anything that's actually going to really knock down the power of the USA is not being prepared for this. And they definitely aren't being prepared for this deal. They're being prepared for the opposite. The opposite is getting too warm. And I'm thinking, well, that's not too bad. So it'll be nice and sunny all winter and you can grow tomatoes, right? <laughs> I mean, big deal. But anyway, you know, the other drama that's in the news about the interview and Kim, he don't care, man. He's watching a movie. He's like thinking, oh, this shit's funny. I know this is just a stupid movie. He don't care. He don't care, you know. So he's even watching it by the DMZ as, a, as an active, uh, you know, he's a friendly guy. He's just chilling out. So he don't give a damn. For real. For real. No, just kidding. I don't know what Kim's doing, man. <laughs> if I was him, I wouldn't even give a damn because I realized it's a stupid movie. You know, what does he care? I mean, the way it was written, it wasn't serious. You know, you could tell it wasn't serious. I don't know why he's so mad. Maybe he got over it. I don't know. He, I think he did. So we'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out one of these days. But anyway, you know, if it does get to be like super cold out, at least if you're in Staten Island, you can walk across the water, the narrows, and you, you don't have to go across the bridge. And you can get all the way down to Coley and Coney Island and do a little skiing down there on Coney Island or something like that off the wharf, you know. So, one thing on the bright side, but, you know, this is probably, you know, everybody's looking at um, the, the U.S. debt clock. And I don't really think this is the thing that's going to blow the deal up. I think it's the weather. The weather, man. Not that it has to, but if you look at how the government is planning... They're planning for warming when the op, you know, like the ocean's going to be rising up and all this kind of garbage or whatever. It's not going that way. It's it's probably going cooling. I think it really is. I know there's some exaggerations out there, and I did point to one about, 
you know, uh, having a 50 times as much snow, 20 times as much snow. I mean, even talking here, like if you're talking 20 inches of snow and you had 10 times, that's 200 inches. I mean, you got to realize what 200 inches of snow is in a season. I think, uh, I don't know what Buffalo gets. It's a little more than 100 inches. But I don't I think about the only place in the United States that gets more than 200 inches of snow is like Mount Washington, New Hampshire, and northern New Hampshire, maybe like, well, definitely Mount Rainier in Washington State for sure. But <laughs> that's about it, man. I mean, come on, man. I don't know if it's going to go that freaking much, but it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to. It actually cause a lot of financial havoc. This is going to strain the budgets on energy. It's going to strain the budgets on food production. And the city budgets, the state budgets, blah, blah, blah. And it's not going to end. It's not going to be a one-year thing. So, I don't know, man. You know, as far as I know, you know, you can take your purple crush. You can worry about your snow. Get you some stockings. Or you could be like... Kim Jong saying, go ahead, Marilyn, I love you. <laughs> Kim Jong and Marilyn, yeah, you know, that'd be a real couple, right? Kim Jong and Marilyn. I bet you Kim Jong likes blondes. I think he does. I think he does. Really. So, Marilyn and Kim Jong. So, anyway, go ahead, Kim. Have fun. Anyway, so, anyway, if you're uh, cold, just hang out there with the cat and the cat igloo. Uh, but, you know, this really, in reality, is it's... It's something that, when I'm putting it out today, it's not going to happen next week. But it is reality. It really is reality, even though there's a lot of exaggerations out there, maybe, you know, how... It's not an exaggeration that, because it's going to catch people off guard, but, you know, as far as getting 200 to 1,500, 200 to 1500 inches of snow this year in the United States, I don't think so, but, you know, it doesn't have to be anywhere near that to create a lot of problems, so... You know, it's going to be a whole other uh, world. It's going to be a changed world for a while, for decades. And uh, if you don't plan for it, you get some problems, man. So, uh, uh, you know, if you really want to actually, you know, it's not it's not the big drama like, you know, you hear in the other alternative media. But um, if you really think about it, this is going to be kind of a slow process. But it's going to look like it's not exactly related, weather related, but this is actually going to take a lot away a lot of the resources of the government because of the weather. It's going to put a major strain on the government. It's going to put a major strain on the people that are in most need, that don't have the money to pay for food, that are in food assistance, that don't have the money to buy electric cars when the price of gas goes way up. It's going to, believe me. Because when the price of gas is getting this low, like down to this, that's killing all... In other words, you know, this is an age-old thing even with, with oil, with commodities, whatever. Even the people in commodities, are in platinum, for instance, the platinum industry, they don't want platinum to go up too, too high, for instance. You'll hear this stuff from the South African miners. You're saying, why? Because what that can do is create demand destruction. They don't. They'd rather have it a steady income where the prices don't go from real high because real high prices mean they go to real low. Conversely, real low prices mean no new capital expenditures are being um, done or, or invested in and expended to, to explore for more oil, which means that when the existing oil um, is really tapped out and maybe the demand picks up a little more, there isn't a lot of capital expenditures already being invested to um, bring bring up and turn the spigots back on. So you might see the price escalate very quickly and very suddenly. And that's they don't like that. Actually, people in the mining and oil industry don't like that. They'd rather have their price stay a nice steady medium where they make money, whereas it's going real high and real low. They don't like that because they can't plan nothing. But real low prices very likely could lead to real high prices and conversely the other way around so you know if your silver goes way to hell up you know really crazy like you know 70 bucks or an ounce or something which it's not that crazy you know even it could be like several times what it is today um and it's you know if you're looking at the P&L of the mines 
it gets it's getting dangerous, you know. And I know people then are gonna be saying, "I got a real deal on my silver because I only paid fifty dollars an ounce, and it was like fifty fifty five on the spot market." What a bargain, <laughs> you know. It's almost like I gotta ad lib on that too because it's almost like the more you pay for something, the more you the more you have this tendency to think that it's worth more. You know, if, even though it's the exact same item, if you pay more for it, it's worth more. You know, it's almost like today, if you get silver, like, really cheap, people go, well, it's not worth as much. But when later, when it's really up there, they pay more, wow, it, yeah, it's worth a lot. You know, it's like they think they got more. It's like buying a, uh, you know, uh, what the hell is it, uh, a, a Loris watch versus a Rolex, both do the same damn thing, but, you know... Hey, man, I could tell better time with my Rolex because I paid more money. Or, I'm not exactly a perfect example, but, you know, that's the psychology of it. So, anyway, go ahead, buy your silver. And, uh, Marilyn, um, make sure you uh, watch out for that Kim because uh, Kim does like blondes. He's, he's, not, he's like, right now, he's watched the interview and he said, Marilyn, uh, and Marilyn said, go ahead, Kim. <laughs> you need to have an interview with me because I think it's getting too cold up there in North Korea and... Uh, we got to mend our ways and uh, get things going here again in the international community. So, actually, to tell you the truth, uh, Kim is probably an all right guy, but I don't know. Who the hell knows who to I don't think he's running North Korea, to tell you the truth. <laughs> I don't see how he could, to tell you the truth. You know why? You know what really tells me why? That haircut. I don't see how a guy with, with a haircut like that could be running North Korea. But, you know, he's just probably a party animal in his figurehead, for all I know. 